Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Please subscribe guys, it really does help with the algorithm and I have noticed you have been subscribing. Also remember a thumbs up, never hurts as well guys. I got Bitcoin here on the daily. Right now Bitcoin trading at 47,800 per BTC. And, uh, you know, not, I mean, still we're just kind of waiting, chopping sideways over here and, um, you know, not too much movement, nothing to the upside nor to the downside. So we're not seeing uh, anything very exciting, at least not yet. Same goes for XRP, right? We had seen this uh, pump up roughly uh, beginning on uh, July 20th, and uh, we, we've seen it kind of moving sideways in and around there. Another move up, but then a huge sell-off. Of course, Bitcoin was also selling off in and around that time. Uh, and now, what we're seeing now for XRP, and you know what, maybe if I put it on the 4-hour, we can see it a little better is um, what is looking like it could be, and uh, I mean, don't hate me for saying this, an inverse pennant. All right, so that would denote uh, the price going even lower. Uh, and you know, I've talked about this on this channel before, the fact that uh, XRP price could go as low as, you know, anywhere between 80 and 95 cents, give or take. Of course, this is a range. Uh, you know, it could, we could see it hit push up against this uh, old level of resistance here, uh, anywhere between there and here where we've already kind of seen it dip into, right? So what I'm looking at is this supply zone over here from way back in April of 2018, of course, butting up against old resistance from 2018. That resistance was retested back in uh, 2020 and of course uh, in early 2021 as well. So uh, what I'm eyeing for XRP and uh, I know it's not a great thing, but I am prepared. I do have buy orders in under a dollar for XRP, and it wasn't what I was going to do. It wasn't what I was going to do, but I see this final opportunity here, and uh, I think after this, and I mean, I'm not going to get in unless it gets under a dollar. I will keep you guys posted on uh, when I do get into that position, but uh, yeah, basically in and around here, anywhere between 75, 80 cents and about 97 cents, give or take. This is the zone I'm eyeing, uh, the inverted bearish pennant now. Uh, suggesting that we could see XRP dip down in there. And uh, ultimately, guys, that would still uh, ultimately make higher lows. Even if we did see XRP dip as low as this, this would still be a higher low than this, higher low than this, so on and so forth. So still trending upward. So I'm bullish. I mean, I'm bullish long term for XRP. I mean, ultra long term, I'm super bullish. But uh, even uh, for, you know, the next uh, four, five, six months or so, super bullish for XRP in the short term, meaning, you know, in the next uh, week or so, I would not be surprised if we did see another dip. Again, guys, this is not financial advice, just putting it out there. And I noticed this, I don't know if uh, the Canadian viewers in the audience know about this, Maxime Bernier, he is the head, the leader of the People's Party of Canada, a uh, political party, and uh, he was asked about Bitcoin. Many people are asking if I support Bitcoin and cryptos. Of course I do. I hate how central banks are destroying our money and economy. I'm more of an old-fashioned gold and silver fan, but cryptos are another new and innovative way to counter this that should be encouraged. So, I mean, you don't have to tell me who you are voting for, but what are your thoughts on Maxime Bernier, his opinions on cryptocurrency, central banks, how it's destroying our money? Put it down in the comments, guys. I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. Now, to the Ripple and XRP case, uh, this from the Wrath of Kahneman. In this response, Ripple argues the SEC fails to provide real responses, contra the Rule 33, contradicts its own admission. Judge Torres decides how to interpret the Howey test and won't provide evidence XRP buyers expected a profit because it undermines their Howey case. Now, the Wrath of Kahneman just uh, retweeting out James K. Filan's tweet here. So this is the latest uh, with regards to SEC v. Ripple. Chris Larson, uh, and, and they're filing their reply to the SEC's response to Ripple and Larson's motion to compel interrogatory responses regarding the application of the Howey test to sales of XRP over the last eight years. So these are uh, seven pages in two tweets, guys, and uh, I'm not going to go over everything. Wrath of Kahneman here summarizes some of the key points, will not answer if they think Ripple's efforts were necessary to increase the XRP price. Uh, for the first time, they redefine the issue of common enterprise, or Howey, as XRP success in Ripple's ecosystem, not exchanges slash the XRPL. So that's interesting. Finally, and egregiously, the SEC can't answer if the date of XRPL function is relevant, despite their website stating that it is especially relevant in an analysis of whether the third prong of the Howey test 
is satisfied. And I don't know if you guys remember this, Alex Cobb posted this from back in early of 2020. It was uh, originally posted by Darren Moore around that same time. This is Stuart Alderati, General Counsel for Ripple, uh, and this was back from September of 2019. And you know what it has to do with? The SEC running an XRPL node. We're not looking to compete with fiat. We're not looking to compete with central banks. Um, we, and the XRP sits, as I said, on an open permissionless ledger. How do I know that it's open and permissionless? Because the chief technology officer at Ripple tells me it is. He explains it to me. But I also have hard evidence. The SEC announced about a month or two ago that they're going to establish a node on the XRP ledger and other open and permissionless ledgers. Okay, so I think that that speaks volumes. Again, this is an old clip and I gotta give courtesy to, uh, a, well, originally Darren Moore, he does have a YouTube channel. I suggest you do follow Darren on YouTube, follow him on Twitter, uh, and this uh, video was uh, from Alex Cobb's channel. So, the confirmation, the SEC was running a node, of course, they have stated all these confusing terms in this letter, um, and just, you know, just kind of muddying up the situation even further. I wanted to thank Wrath of Kahneman, though, uh, for kind of uh, parsing out the details here, uh, and I will link this letter in the description of the video if you guys are interested. Um, we also have this, guys, I mentioned this in yesterday's video, this is Charles Gasparino, and this is mainstream media, okay, this is Fox Business News, I mentioned the tweet where he's uh, where he's now investigating the SEC versus Ripple case, and uh, if you guys didn't catch yesterday's video, I'll link it up here in the top right-hand corner. So Charles Gasparino mentions this breaking SEC versus Ripple could decide the future of the agency's ability to regulate cryptocurrency, and it might not end well. Consider what happened when the DOJ pushed the envelope on insider trading, resulting in a rulemaking prosecution tougher. So uh, he's just uh, tweeting out uh, the location and time where you can catch that. Uh, so, of course, the XRP uh, community here putting in their two cents. I want to keep moving because uh, that's not all Gasparino mentions. Uh, Michael at Valve5 Links brought this to my attention as well. Now, this is uh, an article from you today, just kind of summarizing uh, the multitude of tweets that uh, Charles Gasparino uh, uh, posted yesterday. He was on Twitter, very active. In a recent tweet, Fox Business's Charles Gasparino claims that sources within the SEC told him that the reason why Ether is not deemed to be a commodity by the regulator is the built-out infrastructure of the blockchain that has been operational for years. So this is something else that we should be paying attention to. Ripple, on the other hand, still relies on XRP in order to finance its businesses. Uh, Gasparino says that the reason why the SEC alleged that the cryptocurrency is actually an unregistered security, that is the reason why. In March of 2020, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse told the Financial Times that the company would not be profitable without selling the token. According to the SEC's complaint, Ripple stated in a 2013 promotional document that its business model was predicated on the success of XRP. Well, we do know that they have a vested interest in XRP. Uh, however, XRP, as we all know, as the uh, XRP detractors always like to remind us of, XRP is not necessary for Ripple to succeed. So the silver lining of that whole uh, line of thinking now could in fact save Ripple's butt in court. Expectedly, Gasparino's explanation didn't satisfy members of the XRP community, with many of them taking issue with the word built out. Ethereum is currently in the process of transitioning to a proof of stake model. Ripple as well uh, as the XRP community are demanding answers about the SEC's internal deliberations on the assets. Of course, we all know about the William Hinman uh, deposition and what's going on there. I will link this in the description, guys, if you wanna read the rest of it. But I wanted to jump into this even further. John Deaton here, on Twitter saying the SEC is not only claiming when Ripple sells the token it's a security, but it's arguing that all XRP, including secondary market sales of XRP by non-Ripple entities, are all unregistered securities. The SEC is hurting users and developers utilizing the XRPL. It is indeed absurd. So uh, again, uh, John Deaton just tweeting this out, the XRP traded even in the secondary market is the embodiment of those facts, circumstances, promises, and expectations, and today represents that investment contract. So it doesn't sound to me like their, um, their line of thinking, the SEC's line of thinking is too focused. Um, and it feels like they're just throwing darts, hoping for a bullseye. Well, Charles Gasparino here posting something else here on Twitter yesterday. SEC enforcement sources tell Fox Business the logic of the agency's case versus Ripple is that the company's infrastructure is still being built out. So XRP, the token which was used to finance the thing, is considered a security. 
Ethereum infrastructure is totally built out and has been for years, thus it's clearly a commodity. So again, just to that article uh, that I read to you guys, here is, uh, here is his tweet with reference to that. So the SEC now arguing that since uh, Ripple is still building out the system, that uh, it is still uh, considered a security, whereas Ethereum's has been built out for years now. He goes on to say, Hester Peirce argues that all may be the case, but the SEC splits hairs. Crypto innovation is being stifled, so what's needed is a safe harbor that pulls back all this enforcement action. Uh, and so this story is developing, but it is great. We've got Charles Gasparino now on the side of the XRP community Fair. reporting on this and really kind of drilling in on some of the details. This is what we need. We need the mainstream media to really kind of get their claws into this story and uh, get it out to the public because this is going to affect everybody. Uh, for those of you guys who didn't see the clip, this is Charles Gasparino on Fox Business. Uh, I'm not going to play the full clip, but I will leave the link uh, to this in the description of the video, guys. I'm just going to play you a couple of minutes here at the end. Listen to this. You know, maybe the thing is, and I've been speaking with SEC people and former SEC people about it, maybe the, and, and they, they agree that there's, there's a regulatory sort of mishmash here. Maybe, mm -hmm. and they've raised this, that the president's working group on cryptocurrency could act as an Uber regulator. And I don't know, this. Charlie. And right. I don't know if if Ripple investors believe that the SEC is going to be successful. That that crypto is up right now 4.7 percent. But over uh, the past year, the return is 408 percent. Yeah, you know, listen, I they don't have a bad case according to lawyers I speak to. Uh, I, look at it this way: Ethereum was created, right? The block, the, the Ethereum blockchain was created. They used financing to do that. Um, they sold they sold some some crypto, some token. Can't remember which one. Ether mm -hmm. came out later, as you know. Um, the SEC says that Ethereum is not, and, and those tokens are not uh, that are trading now are not securities because the uh, the creation of uh, Ethereum is old, and now they just trade out there like commodities. That standard is is almost the same thing with Ripple. The only thing different is the SEC is saying Ripple is still building out its technology. This there's some yeah. real gray area here. And by the way, Hester Pierce has it right. They probably should do a safe harbor purse. and then purse and then purse. try to get the, try to get a, a presence working group to be the Uber regulator here. Try to get a president's group to be the Uber regulator. Notice what he also said about uh, insider information. He was talking to some of the lawyers on the case, and he's saying that they were telling him Ripple has a really good case here. So, amazing news, Charles Gasparino. Uh, obviously, our man inside the mainstream media now reporting on this. And I think it will really come to light eventually that the SEC has been corrupt since the beginning. This from Darren XRP at Fame 21 More. And this is from an old article, Larson, meaning Chris Larson, is keen to point out that any regulator past or present has served this country, but also wanted to call out the former chairman of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, Gary Gensler, who Larson believes has a Bitcoin agenda and is trying to kill off crypto challengers. Now, I did a, a video uh, not too long ago. It was a couple of weeks ago now where I mentioned uh, Chris Larson talking about this very point back in 2018. I'll link that video up here if you guys didn't catch it. This goes on to say he's been a Bitcoin advocator for months and months, and pretty much I think he's been carrying a Bitcoin agenda. He clearly repeats the same misinformation down here, so clearly that looks like he has a Bitcoin agenda. I understand he's a Bitcoin holder. He should disclose that if that is the case. So this uh, coming from Chris Larson from uh, this resource here, bobsguide.com, uh, just full of articles here. And again, this was from October of 2018. So an older article, uh, and I have a feeling that it does have to do with that same interview uh, that I talked about in that video I did a couple of weeks ago. Nevertheless, I'll link this here, guys, in the description of the video if you want to research further. And some more juicy information from XRP Darren. I just thought I'd bring this up. And this from shelby.senate.gov. Now, now, this is the official website of Senator Richard Shelby, a United States Senator for Alabama. And this was posted, guys, on May 21st, 2013. Selby reacts to CFTC IG report on MF Global. Now, here's what he has to say about Gary Gensler. Chairman Gensler aggressively lobbied for and secured sweeping new authorities of the CFTC under Dodd-Frank. Yet this report meticulously documents the CFTC's failure to fulfill its most basic responsibility of protecting customer accounts at MF Global. So under Gary Gensler, the CFTC failed to fulfill its most basic responsibility of protecting consumer accounts. Sound familiar? 
Down here, guys, the report also examines Chairman Gensler's decision to recuse himself from the MF Global fallout. He apparently had no reservations about participating in the regulation of MF Global before its collapse. Let me just go down here. The report does not uncover a defensible explanation for Chairman Gensler's capricious behavior. I therefore continue to question whether Chairman Gensler was more concerned with protecting customers' accounts or protecting himself from accountability. So Gary Gensler, are you our daddy? No, 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 no. Then why are you acting like it? Or at least trying to act like our daddy. Um, so 2013, we're already seeing reports of this uh, alleged self-interest from Gary Gensler from Richard Shelby's webpage here, shelby.senate.gov, uh, brought to us by Darren Moore here. And, you know, once a snake, always a snake. I mean, I have a feeling that, uh, and I know the XRP community was really optimistic at the beginning when we were going to get a new chairman in, especially after that decision to sue Ripple came down from Jay Clayton. We were hoping that Gensler would make a difference, but clearly this is not the case. And, uh, you know, as more evidence comes to light, it certainly does demonstrate Gary Gensler's true stripes. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Like the video, guys. Thumbs up if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.